Yo, what's up, guys? C-Jax back with another SmackDown review, man. And I gotta say, I actually kind of enjoyed tonight's episode of SmackDown. Now, we're obviously gonna talk about all the stuff with Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes and the promo, and they're, they're gonna be teaming together versus Solo and Jacob Fatu at Bad Blood. But overall, from start to finish, this was an enjoyable episode of SmackDown. I can't lie, okay? This was pretty decent. Now, let's start off with the first thing of the night, which was Triple H, and he pretty much comes out. He's like, so... Uh, are you ready? Smackdown. And it's like that, like he usually does. Uh, I'm the game. Uh. And then he comes out, he announces that Solo and Cody is going to start the show. And so it did. Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa for the WWE Championship happened. And this match was honestly, it was all right. It was decent, right? I'm not going to lie. There's a couple of cool spots like Cody doing a Cody cutter off the steel cage. Um, you had Solo Sokoa doing a superplex off the cage, which I think he accidentally hurt his head or his neck on. I was genuinely convinced that, you know, multiple times throughout this match that Cody or Solo got a concussion or hurt themselves because that's just what it looked like at the end of the day. However, besides that, this match went on for, I think, about like 20 plus minutes. It was actually a pretty long-winded match. But uh, at the end of it, Cody Rhodes actually won clean. Everyone in their family, including myself, ex expected this match to be interfered with by the Bloodline. But the fact that Cody won clean is genuinely surprising to me. And then after this, the Bloodline comes out and basically tries to attack Cody. And then we get the return of the OTC Roman Reigns, who absolutely elevated this show on SmackDown because he was in actually a good portion of this show, like at least like one fifth of the show, honestly. Um, he comes out, locks himself in the cage, and goes 4v1 with the bloodline, but Jacob Fatu kind of ran off the cage and kind of went to go help Solo out of the ring, so it was kind of like a 2v1. Uh, but Roman 2v1 saw Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga, and then after that, you know, so Jacob Fatu brings Solo out of the ring, so it's just Roman and Cody. They stare down each other a little bit, and then Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa get back up and try and beat up Roman and Cody. Uh, they give a good attempt, but then Roman and Cody outpower them, and then they do another stare down, and we're going to get back to this later because they look back on the ramp and see Solo and Jacob Fatu and Roman's upset with the bloodline Cody's upset with the bloodline so uh, you know they're obviously they're going to set up a match for them at Bad Blood which they did later at the night but we're going to get back to that segment later because I actually thought the segment later in the night was actually pretty good it was actually pretty awesome if I don't say so myself so we're going to get to that later in the night but Solo versus Cody was actually a decent match it was like I don't know I mean it was like on the par of their SummerSlam match. I mean, it might have been slightly worse or slightly better. It doesn't really matter. Ne these guys cannot put a match together that's going to be anything above like a 7 out of 10. So that's pretty much what this match was. It is what it is. It's as good as you can get. It's two jobbers for most of their careers uh, fighting against each other for the WWE Championship. So it is what it is. Um, we're going to talk about the WWE Championship later. Don't worry about that. Because that title is about to get real interesting when the final box, Mama Rhodes, baby, Mama Rhodes, slapping that arm, baby. It got goosebumps. <laughs> that's what The Rock says at least. I mean, I don't, I don't know why else he's slapping his arm. But anyways, um, then you get Mishin versus Chelsea Green. Uh, this match doesn't matter. Let's just skip over this. <laughs> like, I was going to talk about it, but nobody cares. Then we get Randy Orton as the return surprise partner for Kevin Owens versus Waller in theory. Kevin Owens, like, Stone Cold Stunner, this, uh, this, this guy named Ricky, this jobber named Ricky that came out there. It was a pretty funny moment. And then Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, this is just a run-of-the-mill tag team match to get Randy Orton out there and to get the crowd pleased. And they loved it. Um, I like seeing Orton hit the DDT and then doing the RKO. Theory got hit with a stunner and oversold it like he always does man theory is a great seller very entertaining seller as well so he did a pretty good job with this segment or this match i should say and that was pretty much it it was a run on the mill match it was just cool to see orton out there and that was pretty much that however this is the worst part of smackdown tonight Nia Jax and Bailey cut one of the worst segments and promos I've ever seen, and Tiffany Stratton is involved in this too. Same with Naomi. Nia Jax is basically talking on the mic. She's like, "I'm your king of the ring. Or I'm your queen of the ring. I'm the WWE Women's Champion. I'm your queen of the ring. I'm the queen of the ring. I'm your queen. I'm the queen. I'm the WWE Women's Champion." It's the same stuff. The classic generic promos that most people in WWE cut because they can't cut promos. So this is pretty much what we get. However, um, this was—I mean, I'll say this: her promo tonight was not the worst of her career, but that's not saying much, is it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then Bailey comes out, and she did does cut the worst promo of her career. She comes out and says some nonsense like, Nia, I want my rematch. I'm going to fight you at bad blood. You guys remember last week? She's talking to the crowd. She's like, do you guys remember last week when I beat Tiffany Stratton, the up-and-coming star? You guys remember that? And the crowd goes dead silent because nobody cares about Bailey, and her gimmick is garbage. She even utters the line after Tiffany Stratton comes out, by the way, and says absolutely nothing like she always does. I mean, Tiffany Stratton is literally just hype at this point. She's had, like, a couple good matches, obviously, and she's a talented wrestler, but to say that she's anything, like, spectacular or super right now is just out of control. It's glazing, but, you know, knowing the type of fans that Tiffany Stratton and, like, Rhea Ripley 
Ripley and Liv Morgan get. I wouldn't be surprised if these sick guys are actually praising this garbage. Even though this segment was mid, nobody cares because they're still going to cheer for her anyways. But Tiffany Stratton does absolutely nothing. Bailey then says, Tiffany, why don't you go Tiffany time your mom? You're making your mom jokes in 2024. She also said, what's up, idiot, ding dong, to Nia Jax. I'm like, Bailey has no idea what she's doing on the mic. It's very evident, and she's been around for, what, a decade now or even more than that, and she still has no idea what's happening on the mic? It's embarrassing. This was stupid. You're cutting mom jokes in 2024, talking about some what's up, ding dong, and then Naomi comes out, and she got actually a very good pop. I was honestly kind of surprised. I mean, it's Naomi. She got beat by Blair Davenport and still gets a good pop, so, I mean, congratulations to her, I suppose. But, yeah, she comes out, and basically next week, we're going to get a match that's going to be Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton versus Bayley and, uh, and, uh, and what's her name, <laughs> and I almost forgot, and Naomi, for, uh, for basically what's going to happen is whoever gets pinned in that match on the Naomi and Bayley team, if they lose, they're going to leave SmackDown for good, and then, uh, you know, the, the person who gets the pin is going to face Nia Jax in a WWE Bad Blood Championship match for the WWE Women's Championship, and at the end of the day, I don't care what happens with this match, and I don't care what happens with these promos, because they suck. They just do. And also, quick shout out to this pretty cool backstage segment where Bianca and Jade are there with their tag belts. And Jade Cargill actually drops a pretty funny line that was good for her promo. And she's pretty much like, uh, everyone in the women's locker room should find their applications because me and Bianca are going to be giving out some work. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was pretty cool. It was a good play on words. And they're kind of teasing something for uh, Nia and Tiffany to go after the tag belt. So I think that should be a pretty good feud. I mean, it's your top woman stars. And Bianca and Jade are actually interesting and are good wrestlers and have good characters. So, you know. Well, this could be pretty cool down the line. Then you get past this, we get Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. This is a good match. I would honestly, I, I mean, I would say I'm getting tired of these matches, but honestly, it's a consistent like seven or eight out of 10 level match every week. I'll take that. You know what I'm saying? I'll take that rather than, you know, Cody Rhodes. I respect you. I appreciate you. I don't even talk about. I don't even talk about. Like, no. I'd rather much have this than like a Cody Rhodes match where he gets beat up in one minute and doesn't even wrestle on SmackDown like he mostly does. But anyways, um, this was Melo Hayes versus Andrade. It was a good match. Probably their second best of the five that they've had. And after this, it's revealed that Andrade is going to fight LA Knight next week on SmackDown for the US Championship. And this is interesting. This is cool. I like this. It's going to be a good match. But LA Knight just effortlessly cuts a great promo in like two or three minutes. And this is what this guy is. He's a consistent great promo in a consistent above average match. That's what LA Knight is in WWE, and that is perfect to set him up for what he's going to be, which is probably a very good mid-carder for the majority of his career that he has left, if not a world champion, which he definitely is capable of being world champion. Don't get it twisted. If Gunter can be world champion, LA Knight can be world champion. He's much better than Gunter. Maybe not in the ring, but 100% is better than Gunter on the mic and has charisma and as a character, so just don't give me that. Um, then also... You basically have the next thing, which was, what was it? I think after that, yeah, they pretty much, they did a couple things with like commercials or whatnot and basically reminded you like of the new logo and Megan Thee Stallion's garbage intro song for the SmackDown now and all this other stuff. And then after this, we get Roman Reigns' promo, which man, dude, again, the rock slapping his arm, man. Mama Rose, Mama Rose, got goosebumps. This promo was awesome. And just like LA Knight could get it done in two minutes, he could just cut a really good promo in two minutes. That's what Roman Reigns does here. He cuts a promo that, honestly, I was nervous for at first because Roman Reigns is now a good guy. He's a face. So, you know, sometimes faces cut bad promos, kind of like what Bailey did earlier tonight and what Cody Rhodes has been doing in his garbage title reign and his garbage promos for five months. However, when they finally get to this moment, Roman Reigns cuts a great face promo. And it kind of was like a heel promo in a sense because he says things. He's like, I'm still Roman Reigns. With or without the Ula Fala in the WWE Championship, I'm still Roman Reigns. I'm not the original Tribal Chief. I'm the only Tribal Chief. This is my ring. This is my WWE. This is my company. Like, he cuts a great promo that reminded you of heel Tribal Chief Roman Reigns from a couple years ago with Brock Lesnar in that promo. He brings the same intensity and the same character. So Roman Reigns is basically one of those, like, those faces that carries himself as a heel, which is the perfect face that you want to have to be good long term. And that's exactly what he had. And while he was cutting this promo, actually... Cody Rhodes, Mr. What do you want to talk about? The North Star of the Wrestling Division. He comes out and he actually interrupts Roman's promo and gets no pop. No pop from the crowd when he came out. Because when Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes are in the same ring or in the same vicinity, 
Roman Reigns is always going to win over the crowd and win over the audience because he is a bigger and a better star than Cody Rhodes. And this is actually a good thing for Cody Rhodes because I have to be consistent, guys. I've been talking about Cody Rhodes' title reign being garbage for a long time now, and it has been. Ever since it started, pretty much, it's been absolute and utter trash. However, I always say Cody Rhodes is nothing without the bloodline, but when he is with the bloodline, he actually becomes interesting and you want to cheer for the guy. I don't want to cheer for the guy right now because, I mean, it's him going with Roman Reigns and they're butting heads still. So, I mean, obviously, I'm going to pick Roman in that situation, but you get the point. Now that Cody is involved with the bloodline and we know for a fact the only reason they're doing Cody and Roman versus Fatu and Solo at Bad Blood is to build into Cody's eventual bloodline feud with The Rock. And that feud is going to be absolutely incredible because it's The Rock. <laughs> like, that, it's, it's that simple. And so, them doing this is actually very unpredictable because everyone thought it was going to be Jimmy and Roman versus Fatu and Solo. But now they're doing Cody and Roman, which is your two top stars pretty much in the WWE besides, like, you know, Punk and Rollins and McIntyre, all that other stuff, right? But Roman Reigns is the star in the company. Like, he's the main guy. And then everyone else is just kind of like a gap. And then it's everyone else, like Roman or like uh, Rollins and Cody and Drew McIntyre and Punk and all those guys, right? So that was pretty much that but cody basically says this used to be your company this used to be your ring until i beat you at wrestlemania they throw the mics down and get a heated face to face and then solo and fatu interrupt tama tonga and tongaloa come out to interrupt them and fight against cody and roman and uh at the end of this roman and cody stand tall and roman looks at that contract and he's like you know what I'm going to just sign this. So Roman was originally going to do a 1v2, him versus Solo and Jacob Fatu. But then, <sighs> Mr. What do you want to talk about? He puts his hand out like Roman does to grab the mic. And then he basically takes the contract from Roman. Roman hands it to him. And then Cody signs the contract. So now we're getting Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns versus Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu at Bad Blood. And I have to say... I am actually kind of hyped for this match and for this story. This whole story in this feud between Cody and Roman Reigns still kind of continuing simultaneously while Roman Reigns is feuding with the bloodline, the new bloodline, this is going to be very interesting. Not just because of the past that they've had, because Roman and Cody had a great feud leading up to Mania 39 and the match was very good as a good main event. Then you had this year where they feuded leading up to Mania 40 and the main event was absolutely awesome. One of the best Mania main events probably of all time. This is going to be interesting, guys. Their backstory, their history together, them being, he you know, Roman being a heel and Cody being a face versus Roman now being a face and Cody being a face as well. Like the dynamic of their past, their present, and even what's going to happen in the future with Cody and Rock. This story has the, uh, the potential to be the most engaging story since the mania buildup of Roman Rock versus Cody and Rollins. Like this could easily go down as the second best story of the WWE this year, which wouldn't be saying much because the last five months of Raw and SmackDown has been horrible, but you get the point. This is going to be interesting interesting man and i really like the direction they're going with this they subverted the expert they actually kind of did something different with the expectations i thought it would be roman and jimmy they're doing roman and cody and this is actually very interesting to me man i just i, I really like the idea of these two past enemies working together it's kind of like batman and joker teaming up you get what I'm saying? Like, it's very interesting. That dynamic is very cool, in my opinion. And so them being able to deliver this and give us a bad blood tag team match, which I hope becomes no DQ or no disqualification or street fight or something like that, or bloodline rules, maybe, that would be pretty cool. That makes this match that much more interesting. And like I always say with Cody Rhodes, he's his championship reign has been garbage. And it's probably going to continue to be garbage because the only reason Cody Rhodes is in this storyline is simply because they have nothing for him to do and he's not the top story in the company so they have to include him into the top story in the company even though he's the WWE champion and he still is evidently not the biggest story in the company. So they have to include him with the biggest story which is Roman in the bloodline. That just lets you know how important Roman Reigns is because the thing about him is that he elevates people. He elevates the Usos. He elevated them. He elevated Solo. He elevated Sami Zayn. He even elevated Drew McIntyre. McIntyre. You get what I'm saying? This is what Roman does. And he elevated Cody Rhodes, who's now one of your top stars in the company. And now he's doing it again. He's bringing a guy like Cody Rhodes, who I'm going to make a video about this. Cody Rhodes' title reign has been garbage. He's done nothing. But Roman Reigns is going to make this dude seem good again. And that's what Roman Reigns does. That's just what he does. He's the elevator. I've been saying this. A rising tide lifts all boats. And that's what Roman Reigns has done for SmackDown as a whole. When he's there, he has this unpalpable aura and energy where it's just like everything he's involved in is just elevated. Like, it, it just is. The crowd knows it. We know it watching. And that's just the facts. John Cena said he's the GOAT for a reason. I don't think Roman Reigns is the GOAT, but you get the point. He, he's that good, man. 
and he's elevating this thing to a different level bro so finally cody will be interesting to pay attention to because it's like oh what's going to happen next with him and roman you know the, the match is going to be in like two or three weeks so that's pretty close and so roman and cody are going to probably be on smackdown next week or the week after or whatever and cutting promos together and working together this is going to be interesting man and this is the first step in a great direction and normally triple h takes 90 months to build to these things so i'm glad that this just started off the gate and was started and kind of concluded in smackdown in terms of the match happening and the build-up for it so now we just have to wait a couple weeks and do a couple more promos and we'll be right at the match date at bad blood so yes i enjoyed this episode i think this new bloodline storyline with cody and roman is going to be very interesting and it's going to lead to the final boss so everything for the next two or three months should start to pick up and as long as the stories are picking up and as long as even though cody Rhodes is a bad champion at least he's you know somewhat interesting again by proximity of course by proxy um that's going to help elevate the show and you have randy orton back you have kevin owens in the mid card again you have la knight versus andrade in the mid card you have carmelo hayes um you have stuff going on with tiffany and bailey and naomi and all that stuff which even though all those guys are pretty or all those girls are pretty much jobbers i mean at least they're doing something right it's better than you know isla dawn and like freaking um you know tiffany or not tiffany stratton now Shayna baszler and all the bums on raw so smackdown picked up i enjoyed tonight's episode if i don't say so myself i mean it was mostly bloodline so how can you not i'd give this episode like a seven out of ten um, it was pretty solid. I liked it. It was exactly what it needed to be. It was an intro to a new season, and it did its job. So, uh, yeah. Also flowed through, and USA even gave the extra time, too. They ran over the show like seven extra minutes, which is perfect. I'm actually glad they finally showed some guts and finally did that and gave us fans what we want. You know, like the Batista says, give me what I want. They finally did it. So, yes. I enjoyed tonight's Smack episode of SmackDown. Let me know what you thought about it. Video will be coming out probably tomorrow or the day after about some other things I noticed during this episode. So I'll let you guys know when that comes out. Have a great night. Peace out. Put your ones to the sky and raise to acknowledge your tribal chief, boy.